as our molecules get bigger and bigger, meaning um, that we have more and more carbon atoms in our molecules, we increase the number of options of how the atoms can be connected in unique ways. For example, let's consider C6H14, a molecule that has six carbon atoms and 14 hydrogen atoms. There are quite a few different ways that we could connect these six carbon atoms and 14 hydrogen atoms. For example, we could put all six carbon atoms in a straight line like this. The hydrogen atoms would be attached to the carbon atoms as needed. That would be one way that we could assemble these six carbons and 14 hydrogens. Another option that we have would be to connect five carbons in a row and put the sixth carbon as a substituent, or um, five carbons in a row, but put the sixth carbon as a substituent somewhere else. And we have even more options as well. We could create even more versions of C6H14. We have talked a bit about the relationship between molecules that have the same molecular formula, but a different connectivity. This relationship is called constitutional isomers. Constitutional isomers are molecules that have the same formula, but there is something different about the way the atoms are connected to each other, different connectivity. Constitutional isomers are distinguished from each other by their names. So if we wanted to distinguish these three molecules from each other, we would just simply call them by their name. The six carbons in a straight line are hexane, Five carbons in a row with a methyl attached would be a methyl pentane, and we would use the number, the location of the methyl group, 3-methyl pentane versus 2-methyl pentane. We can distinguish constitutional isomers just simply by their names because the name is reflective of the connectivity of the atoms in the molecule. Now, there's another type of isomerism that we haven't talked about yet, and that is called stereoisomers or stereoisomerism. Stereoisomers are different from constitutional isomers they, they do still have the exact same molecular formula. We're going to use a bigger molecule here, C6 or C8H16. So stereoisomers are going to have the same connectivity, obviously, or we would call them constitutional isomers. So perhaps um, for C8H16, maybe we have a six-membered ring with two methyl groups on it. That would be eight carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hydrogens. So we would have two molecules that have the exact same connectivity. The difference between stereoisomers is not their connectivity, but instead it is their spatial orientation. Let's write that down and then we'll talk about what that means. Different spatial orientation. Those are fancy words. Orientation is just talking about direction. So which way is it pointing? To the left, to the right, to the up, to the down. And spatial just means in space. So in a stereoisomers have some part of the molecule that um, is pointing in different directions. For example, Perhaps we have C8H16 with both of the methyl groups sticking up above the plane of the ring, which is something that we talked about in the last video, versus a C8H16 where one methyl group is sticking up and one methyl group is sticking down. So these would be stereoisomers. They have the same formula, they have the same connectivity, but their methyl groups have a different spatial orientation, both on the same side versus one sticking up and one sticking down. Same side versus different side. 
And in the previous video, we talked about how we use prefixes to distinguish these two molecules from each other. Because they have the exact same connectivity, they would both have the same name. Specifically, these guys would both be named 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane because again, their names are based off of their connectivity. So they're both going to be 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane, and the way that we distinguish them from each other is with prefixes. Now we have learned already about the cis and trans prefixes as one way that we can distinguish these from each other. If both of the substituents on a ring are pointed in the same direction, then we call that the cis stereoisomer. And when the substituents are pointing in two different directions, we call that the trans isomer. There are other prefixes that we use as well to distinguish stereoisomers from each other, and we will be learning about that in the next couple of videos. So let's turn this into kind of like a tree diagram. Isomers can be either constitutional isomers or stereoisomers based on the relationship between the two molecules.